Hey friends, welcome to Canadian Cutting Edge. Today we're taking a look at another knife by Ganzo. This is the FH91. It's not their very newest knife, but it's the newest one that's readily available. We've got D2 blade, uh, deep carry right and left pocket clip, full size folder G10 handle scales in three colors. If you're looking for a good D2 blade that is rock solid, uh, made well, good, uh, good budget performance, you've got steel ball bearings, flipper, it just works well. This might be the one you're looking for. Stick around, the full review's coming right now. Let's take a good look at this knife. Flipper action, very good. The size of it, let's compare it to the Ontario Rat, the uh, Rat 1, also D2 steel. Line up those pivot pins. Yeah, you've got two knives that are very similar in size. Uh, the Ganzo here is a little bit smaller than the Rat. Uh, the cutting edge is a little bit longer, but only by about an eighth of an inch, maybe a little more than an eighth. Uh, grip area compared to the Ontario Rat, look at that. Pretty close. You got a little bit more with the rat. And the rat is a big folder. This is sort of a big folder as well. It's not your average folder size. It's it's in the bigger range. Certainly not in the really big range, uh, like the way Kevin Cleary likes. If you're not familiar with his channel, Kevin Cleary uh, has a channel. He's out of Ontario, Canada, another Canadian knife reviewer. Uh, he mostly reviews knives that are like one price grade higher than what I do, or maybe even a little bit higher than that. Although he does some uh, more budget uh, line reviews as well. This guy, like I said, comes in three colors. You've got this gray blue, which is a nice kind of denim color. And you've got green, not OD green. It's more of a brighter green. And black. Satin blade for all of it. D2 steel. Like I said, we've got a nice drop point here. There's a swedge that starts way back here at the Ricasso and comes all the way until the full thickness of the steel ends and it starts getting thinner. The taper comes right here. And check out that taper. Doesn't wanna focus. Uh, you can see that it's full thickness right up to there and then it tapers down, which means you've got a strong tip. Uh, of course, don't pry with your tips. <laughs> That's not what they're designed for. And then a high saber grind, which is a flat grind. Uh, you've got lots of flats over here. So if you've got a guided sharpening system, you can clamp on this guy very easily to sharpen your knife. Belly, long straight section here. Quite good for use. Uh, big sharpener's toil right here. It ends, you know, on the blade side of the uh, plunge. So you've got no problem sharpening this knife right to the end without creating some ugly, thick uh, grind lines there. And then you've got the flipper. Uh, the flipper has got chamfering on the edges of it. And there's some jimping right there, three little lines. It's not really push button mode. I can sort of get it if I push down and back just a little bit, it flips. Really, it's best in light switch mode where you're just pulling it back like uh, turning on a light switch. Works just fine. The uh, jimping gives you a nice grip. Your fingers don't slide off easily. At least mine didn't. Very good. Now for the handle. The handle's got some design here. You can see that there's a uh, cove milled out here and here and then one spot in between where it just ended and then at the end. But the whole... Uh, uh, handle here is, you know, got a nice little curve to it. It's not flat and just with this little bit of milling, it's curved even here on the main section. And then same kind of thing you've got here. You've got this cove cut out here and then it stops. And then you've got the uh, milled out section there for your finger choil. Nicely done. You've got a minor little cove up here. And uh, that's about it for the, the, the G10 dealing until you get to the very back. At the very back there, you've got that uh, milled out section. You've got the uh, backspacer. 
the backspacer's got some jimping in it, which helps a little bit with the grip, not an awful lot. And then you've got the uh, lanyard hole here. Now that's really where you've got a spot where they've done a little bit of work. Uh, they've made it so that, let's turn it around this way, so that uh, if you put lanyard in there, paracord in there, it's not going to bulk out too far. And that brings me to my first con, and it's probably the main con that I have. This little corner right here where my thumbnail is catching, that corner by the lanyard hole, the lanyard uh, milled out section, for some reason, uh, I gotta go back down here where my focusing works better. For some reason, my hand catches on that little spot. And it just sort of digs into the more tender skin in my palm right here. It doesn't injure me in any way. It just is an irritant. And uh, that's easy to fix. A little bit of sandpaper, and uh, you can sand that, round that off a little bit, which is what I'm going to do. And uh, then it's not going to be bothersome at all. Uh, even if I don't keep this knife, I'm sure the next guy is going to appreciate having that uh, little z sharper section in there taken care of. And that's the rest of the uh, the rest of the handle. It's got a very tiny radius. It's not exactly straight, so it helps fit in the palm of your hand. Uh, the back, especially with the back spacer in there, uh, when you're gripping a reverse grip, your thumb is very comfortable along that surface. You got a big surface, good solid grip. A reverse pull grip also works quite well, uh, but your, your fist grip comfortable in either hand. Uh, put your uh, pocket clip on either side, works just fine. Lots of uh, G10 removed here and liner as well, so you got access to the uh, liner lock. Easy to get in there. They didn't put any jimping on it, but there's a chamfer on there and very adequate, very functional. Like you can see here, the uh, liners are hidden inside, they're recessed. I like that. Some people don't. Buy a different knife. <laughs> There's so many knives out there to get. Um, and uh, so if you don't like a styling feature, you know, there you go. You don't have to get it. You can just see a little bit of skeletonizing like that, but I'll show you the insides in just a little while. Uh, still on the outside here, you've got a spacer here for the uh, pocket clip, which I really like. By the way, you know what the price of this knife is? 25 US dollars at Power Cutlery. The AliExpress price is 30 US dollars. So if you're in the United States, uh, the very best place to get this knife most definitely is Power Cutlery. I've got a coupon code there, CCE. You can only use it once and it's only 5% off on Ganzo knives. So if you've got an account with them and you've never used the coupon code, then I would suggest, you know, check out you know, they're listing and maybe get a few Ganzos and use that coupon code to save your 5%. And uh, otherwise, you know, your use of the coupon code's over, but their prices are better than AliExpress, better than other Chinese uh, websites for knives. I can't believe how uh, good the prices are at uh, Power Cutlery. He's got a tough time keeping stock in, so check back often and you see something that you like in stock, don't wait, buy it. I learned that lesson because I had this thing in the cart, and then I went to buy it two days later, it was gone. This was a few months ago, uh, two months, two, about two months ago. And uh, he's got them all in stock, all three colors right now, at least on the day that I'm recording this. Let's talk about uh, the specific features on it. Uh, the sharpness trial size, like I mentioned, is very well done. You've got a little bit of an extra flipper there. It's not really a spot to put your finger, but if you're just putting the tip of your finger, you can put it on there. I'm not sure how you're going to use the knife that way. Cutting sideways works, but not cutting down or anything. Uh, but when your hand's in here, you can get all kinds of good grips. A nice little close-up grip for doing fine slicing if you want to. I use this knife for a lot of cutting, and it is an awesome cutter. I think it's because it's nice and thin behind the grind. You don't often see uh, budget knives done nice and thin like this. Usually they're a couple thou thicker than this one. Um, this one's done well. A couple other features, uh, the uh, screws are recessed inside, except for the uh, pocket clip screws on either the uh, spacer or here. 
but the buttons the button screws there are actually fairly shallow a lot of button screws are deeper uh, these ones aren't that bad at all then you've got the flat spot on the end of the pocket clip uh, so that flat spot means that it doesn't get caught on your hand as easy doesn't poke you as easy as if it was just coming up Let's see what it looks like going in and out of a pocket. So going in, it immediately wants to climb over just like that. And you just push a little bit and off it goes. Now, if you get this blue gray version, it just blends right into a pair of jeans, not perfectly, but quite well. Um, and it holds on well. The spring tension is good. Uh, these holes in here help both to lighten the whole thing and to give a little bit more grip when you grab it to pull it out, not a problem at all. I like that clip quite a lot. The uh, flipper tab, it's a little bit bigger than it needs to be. So it becomes a little bit of a, you know, it pokes a little bit. Uh, it can, you put your hand in there, it can poke a little bit. I generally tell people the, the best thing you can do if you can do it is have one of your pockets only for a knife. If you start putting a knife and your keys into the same pocket or a knife and a wallet, uh, you start get to get things rubbing against each other and uh, eventually stuff gets damaged. It's usually not the knife, it's usually something else. <laughs> Let's uh, take it apart and show you the insides. Now, I recorded this after I recorded the rest of the video. Uh, you can see just a little bit of skeletonizing there. We've got um, steel ball bearings, a good size in there. You know, nice screws, uh, hard screws, but this D-shaped pivot pin has got your regular T8 screw head in it. So how do you know which side it is that you need to loosen? So take your screwdriver and uh, when you're taking it to try to loosen it up, if it doesn't want to turn, stop do the other side but you still need a fair bit of force because they did use a little bit of loctite in there so be careful when you're taking your knives apart your ganzo knives because some of them don't have d-shaped pivot pins so they do spin freely and you need to put them in some kind of vice or something to get them apart other ones i really wish they'd just use a flat screw here and you know they don't have to put that in that it would save them production time just to leave that flat. I really wish they would. Uh, it, it would lower their costs, you know, min a minuscule amount, but it would lower their costs and then only put the Torx head on that one. But you get what you get. Detent on this is very good, which I didn't mention in the rest of the video. Well-made knife, just a few tiny cons. Okay, so now that you've seen what it's like in there, um, yeah, they did that nice skeletonizing. The couldn't really do that much more skeletonizing because then the balance point would be off. Right now, the balance point is right there. Uh, if they made it lighter, then your balance point would be moving over here. Let's go over all of the sizes and dimensions. And while I'm doing the sizes, uh, that will be on the screen and I'll take it away when I'm done. A D2 steel is not a stainless steel. doesn't rust too terribly easily, but it does rust more easily than... Uh, stainless steel does. The sharpness from the factory, 95. 200 and less is considered sharp. 95. This guy was very sharp from the factory. It's not all that crazy sharp right now because I've done a lot of testing with it and uh, it just performed very well. Like I could, slight, I could slice into rotten tomatoes and not super rotten, but you know, soft tomatoes or just about anything and it could just, it cuts quite well. The weight of this knife, that helps with the comfort, 118 grams, 4.2 ounces. For a full-size folder, you know, basically it's an 8-inch folder, that's not bad at all. The length of the cutting edge is 8.78 centimeters, 3.456 inches. The blade length tipped to the closest spot on the handle is a tiny bit less, 8.74 centimeters, 3.44 inches. The uh, thickness of the blade right here, 3.44 millimeters which is 0.1355 so just over an eighth of an inch stock here the blade depth right here about an inch up from the sharpness choil 
2.64 centimeters, 1.039 inches. And the thickness of the edge behind the grind, like I was saying before, how well it slices, 0.49 millimeters, 19 and a half thousandths of an inch. Just awesome. No problem with that. The grind, well, I forgot to write the grind angle on that sheet. The grind angle from one side to the other. The handle now, the handle length is 11.51 centimeters, 4.531 inches. The grip area, it's about 10 centimeters, about four inches. Depends on how you grip it and where you measure it on this, you know, rounded edge and stuff. The uh, handle thickness at the widest spot right here, you know, how it's crowned out, is 1.45 centimeters. That's 0.571. Not bad at all. I like that. The handle depth, it's biggest right here at the end, 2.41 centimeters. That's 0.949 of an inch. And with the knife closed, uh, the widest spot, not counting the flipper tab, right here, 2.99 centimeters, 1.177 of an inch. And the total length of this knife when the blade is deployed, 20.31 centimeters, 7.996, eight inches. It's an eight inch knife. So three and a half inches, four and a half inches, very good proportions. It looks good. It feels good. It's comfortable in the hand. I didn't tell you before about the jimping. The jimping here is just uh, coarse enough to give you good grip. And it's not a long section. I do wish maybe that they would have made it a little bit longer uh, because those of us with bigger thumbs, you know, we reach out a little bit further and uh, that would have been nice. Uh, they would have had to move the swedge back a little bit maybe, but even with that swedge, it could have used a couple more notches there. I didn't miss any uh, jimping here on the G10 by the thumb set, but so that's fine. Uh, comfortable in the hand. Very good, basic utilitarian knife. Uh, I wish they'd make this same model with a thumb stud. That would be really good. In summary, what do I think of this knife? It is well worth your money. If you want just an all round good knife, something that's better than a basic beater, because, you know, Ganzo has been doing a really good job. Oh, and by the way, they've been starting to use the name a lot, and they did that a while back, FB Knife. Um, and this is their FH series, so I thought they might change it to FH Knife, because Ganzo does a lot of changes. Oh, it does say Ganzo. It says FB Knife made by Ganzo. FH91 D2. That's more information than I need, and I don't like ever when there's writing on the main bevel. If it's on a flat section, I don't mind that much, and I wish they would take all this writing and just say Ganzo or just say FB knife, model number, and the blade type, and then on this side, nothing. But they've got their uh, flame logo that almost looks like a Dove logo but I think it's supposed to be a flame logo. What's not to like about this knife? Well, I generally don't like button screws on pocket clips, but these ones are pretty shallow and every pant I tried fits very well in there. So that's not bad. Um, the only other one is I don't really like how sharp this edge is right here. And again, easy, easy to fix that. Everything else about this knife Oh, the flipper tab might be a little bit long, but you can also take that down a little bit too. You could, uh, you know, clamp up the blade and just use a file and file that down a little bit. This is hardened steel, so it's not going to be that easy to file. Uh, but uh, you could take that down a little bit if you really wanted to. But it's not that big a deal. It's a nice knife that I like. Uh, if the flipper tab was missing, there's still enough finger choil here for it to be a secure knife in hand. And... Uh, nice. It might be a little bit hard to drill a hole if you want to put in one of those uh, screw-in uh, thumb studs. Uh, not many of us have uh, drill bits uh, that work on hardened steel. I like this knife and uh, well the Patreon winner that comes up in about a week, a week and a half, 
might choose to keep this one, or maybe they'll buy their own and choose a more expensive knife. But uh, if you're a Patreon supporter, I thank you. And uh, looking forward to doing another Patreon draw to see who's going to win uh, the chance to win a knife this year, this month. Thank you guys for your support. It's very, very well accepted, and I appreciate it. To the rest of you guys, thank you so much for liking, sharing, commenting, and subscribing. And remember, friends, always cut towards your chum, not your thumb. Bye for now.